This is the introduction. Wait, Dad, are we are we recorded? Cool. So in my last video, I was talking about game books, and one of the things I love about game books is they um, they uh, include conditional logic. Uh, there are if then statements. Um, if you choose one route, uh, flip to this page. If you choose another route, go to this other page and, and come to a different result. And and I showed these maps that you can map out the conditional logic. And the reason I made the video was actually because I was going to do a video on this. It was a role-playing game I was programming with my kids. I started it years ago, didn't get very far with it. One thing about doing games with your kids, uh, any project, big project with your kids, is that kids are easily distracted. So I took a bunch of notes. I let it sit on the... Um, let it sit for a couple of years and kind of didn't do any more work on it. But here it is. Um, this is uh, WoW, a RPG of really large numbers. So this is a uh, very simple uh, choose your own adventure kind of game. Um, we've added, we've got health um, being large numbers. We give you start you out with a Google Health, and we have a set uh, list of interactions, just like a Choose your own adventure. I keep saying choose your own adventure. Game book, just like a game book. Uh, just like a game book, you have these uh, interactions. Uh, we've also got, uh, you can do some images. Um, the choices are very limited with, uh, but they are just like a conditional logic. It creates kind of a maze of different ways your path can go. And tracking the health here, we took one point of damage. So our one, with uh, 100 zeros now becomes a nine with uh, 99 nines behind it. Um, and we've also got an inventory where I, uh, I have just gotten the ultimate sword, which I can use to, uh, I think we, I'm pretty sure we use it. Yeah, we use it on some of the different bosses that we're gonna fight in the game. Uh, one thing we learned uh, building this game is that these, these this conditional logic, these different paths you can go, can uh, you can end up with dead ends sometimes. This is the, the paths themselves constitute a, 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 kind, of con a kind of programming themselves. To, so I'll show you here. So the code for this game, uh, I found this code online. It was a, uh, it was a project, uh, someone had written an article, this was years ago, someone had written an article um, just outlining a very basic role-playing game, and the the engine itself um, it was it was maybe a hundred lines long. I've, it's now up to about two hundred lines with my coding. We've got um, uh, we're preloading the images because it was a little jerky to reload the images on the fly. We've got um, we got uh, a, we can append to our story. We've got we list the interactions. We can print our inventory, we can take damage, uh, we can heal, we can check the health, we can describe a scene. Um, when describing the scene, we go and we get the scene from the, the scene object and check its different properties. Does it, does it have a property health? Okay, then do a hit animation and uh, take damage to the character. Does the scene have the property heal? Let's heal the character. If the scene has an image, let's append the image. I uh, use an uh, interesting point here. Interesting note here, we use the, uh, I use object. Uh, I create a div object and a div image when creating the image this way and append them to the scene that preloads the image. Whereas um, later here we create interaction buttons. We get the contents of the scene. We get the title of the scene. This is a new content. This is actually just a, a string of, of all the different HTML elements that we're then going to append. So there's two different ways of doing this. In one case, um, to preload the images, we're doing them as objects, doing them as HTML objects, and then the rest of the content, just for ease, it's we're just appending a string uh, to the to the existing HTML. Uh, I've got a hit at animation, which shakes the screen whenever you take damage. And then on uh, Windows load, we're gonna describe the scene and such. So 200 lines, for the engine, and then, like I said, it can be less than that. We've got your, and then the rest of the game is your objects that make up the game. You've got your character, their inventory, how much health they have, and what's seen. The health here, 
uh, you'll note is a string, and there's a reason for that that we're going to get into. The actual content you can see over here, um, this yellow, all this yellow text, this is the object, this is the scene object. These are all the different scenes in the game. We've got these object scene objects, and uh, they each one has a key, like this one the, is the introduction key. And this would be one scene um, requirement. This is a requirement would be what are the requirements for, for accessing the scene? And let's take a look at some requirements. This, these requirements have programming in them as well. Here we go. Uh, character inventory includes ultimate sword. And so this is a piece of JavaScript that will be evaluated using the eval function to, to uh, make sure that the user has the ultimate sword in their inventory before they can access this this particular scene. Uh, we've got the scene contents. Uh, in this case, this is the scene where you're going to get the ultimate sword, an array of contents that will be added to your, to your collection. The, uh, each of, here we have an interactions uh, object for each scene. This is two interactions. So we have, this is what the user is going to see. So this is more of a JRPG, which means Japanese role-playing game. Japanese role-playing games are very linear whereas uh, Western role-playing games are very open world with lots of choices. Uh, Japanese role-playing games are very focused on story and Western role-playing games are very focused on customization and choice. So that just gets you a little inside joke there that this is a JRPG, you are being directed along, you are on rails, as they like to say. Uh, we've got an, the image for the scene, the title, optional title, and with each of these interactions like One Life, uh, this is what the user will see. One life is the key to get to the, the, the scene in question. This is the one life key. So, so uh, 600 lines of code for the scenery in the game, which is a kind of programming, and then 200 lines of code for the engine, which could easily be scaled down to just 100 lines if you were to clean it up. But it, like I said, this is a really simple framework for a role-playing game, and my kids were very surprised at how easy this was to do. So I noted that um, health is a string. So here we've got um, the universe you're going to take uh, 10 to the 80th power of uh, hydrogen atoms worth of damage um, here, and but you see it's a string. And the reason for that is I discovered that JavaScript can't handle large numbers, and um, that's not a knock on JavaScript. I know people could maybe, a lot of people don't like JavaScript, that's fine, but you can't really knock JavaScript. Why would you ever, a normal website doesn't need to, to work with numbers that have 100 zeros behind them. Um, and it's interesting, so JavaScript can't work with big numbers, so I had to go online and I found there's a lot of uh, big number libraries. And so I grabbed this one, this is a really simple, this was uh, J from jsfromhell.com, uh, Jonas Rayoni, um, Soares Silva had created this big number object. And it's it's pretty nice. And what's it, uh, there's a lot of really dense code here to try and keep things, I guess, uh, compact. Um, and you can do subtractions, you can do addition, multiplication, division. Uh, you can do comparisons, negations, um, lots of all the all the things you can do in math. And what's what's interesting about these libraries is I found um, they they all uh, you know well first off when your role playing game is called a role playing game of really big numbers it's important to be able to do math with really big numbers if I want to have a start my characters out with a Google life um, and and have them take damage it's important to be able to do that and the way a lot of libraries get around that is they take you uh, take the number as a string and then they perform basic arithmetical uh, arithmetic operations on the string and you go you do it just like you would do in class it, just like you were taught the algorithms in school and you would go through the different digits and add them up by by position uh, by tens thousands hundred thousands places one by one along the line and trans kind of, uh, process them that way. So it's it's pretty interesting. It was pretty interesting that because JavaScript can't deal with big numbers, the algorithms to uh, perform operations on really big numbers uh, go back to what we kind of learned in grade school and how to process them. So as a 
family exercise, this was great. Uh, this was a great opportunity for me to, to create a project with my kids. Um, we got to be creative. They were kind of impressed with some of my artwork. I was able to draw an MS Paint rendering the uh, superheroes and bosses that they came up with. Uh, they enjoyed, one of the things, they, they really enjoyed how easy it was to, to make uh, a game like this. And they were really impressed. They were, here they thought my son, one, I remember my son said to me, he said uh, that he thought when you made a video game, you had to program every single second of the game. He didn't under, he didn't know that the game, I didn't have to, that just leaving what you see here on the screen is just going to sit here. It's okay. He thought that you actually had to program the game to handle that everything, handle every second of that. And yes, in the computer, when we get below the high level programming languages, yes, the computer does have to constantly be generating all of this, but we have operating systems and low level languages to handle that. So, so this was a lot of fun. Um, the kids, they, they, they loved how easy it was to program, partially because I'm the one who had to do all the programming. They, um, they enjoyed play testing it. Uh, one thing they found I loved was at one point we had death come and death can give you hit points and they figured out my, my goal was to give you 0. 0.000, get you back to positive 0. 0.000001 hit points. And they figured out that if you clicked on the yes, please, your hit points, uh, you would then get a ridiculous amount of health back, uh, by clicking on that. And they clicked on it several times to give themselves uh, a ridiculous amount. There we go. Yeah. So now we're the two uh, e to the plus one twenty. I get my x my uh, scientific notation. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. I just know how to read it. So they they found a little way to cheat. Um, they they also they were that was something they were doing regularly was they were clicking on things they were in out of order because all of these all of these interactions stay live afterwards, and so. That was um, it was a fun fun way to to do a project with the kids. It was easy. Um, you can write something like this, outline it in a text document, or draw out the maze in paper. Um, because if I was to draw out all these different things, uh, you could draw them out into a flowchart, and that would be that would be a great way to visualize how the logic in your game flows. Because that's the the choices here. These are this is conditional. Uh, this is conditional logic, and that's uh, a great thing you can learn by programming something simple like this. So this is WoW, an RPG of really big numbers. It's a really simple JavaScript program. Like I said, 200 lines of code. I'll post a link to the code down in the description, and it's a great project you can do with your kids. It's not hard. To, the, the, all you have to do is lay out the scenes, maybe draw out the conditional logic into a flowchart, and maybe, you know, the, with 200 lines of code, it's not that hard to, to modify and make your own. And it's a way of taking a game book and putting it into a computer program. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the show, and uh, thank you so much for watching. Yeah, but then what if we keep spinning yes, please? Try it again. Try it. I hit like yes, please again. Hit yes, please. Whoa, you just found a way to get so much life. I do more, more. <laughs> Mama. Wait, ah, you guys found something.